Hello everyone, welcome back to Onig Shabbat. Today we'll be discussing Parashat Tetzaveh. While Parashat Truma focused on the Mishkan, focused on the building, Parashat Tetzaveh focuses on two things. It focuses on the people working inside the Mishkan in the beginning of the work. We read about the Korban Tamid already. We read about how the Mishkan is going to be used. Parashat Truma shows us the potential. Parashat Tetzaveh brings us in the Maise. Now part of bringing the Kohanim is making them these special clothes. That in Perek Avchet, Pasuk Bet, Vasita Bigdei Kodesh, Le'aron Achicha, Le'chavod, Ultif, Aret and Pasuk Dalet, we read about what clothes Vela Begadim Asher Yasu, Choshen, the Ephod, Um Il, Uchton, and Tashbet, Mitznefet of Net, Masubi de Kodesh, Laron Achicha, or Banav, Lechahanoli. And the question is, what is the point of all these clothes? These beautiful clothes, anyone who sees pictures, anyone who's seen models in Machon Mikdash, these beautiful, beautiful clothes, what is the point of them. So the Ramban wants to offer that the point of them is to look like kings. Neither big day melucha, just like we know that Techelet is an important part of the Kohanim's clothes. We also see Megillat Esther that Techelet was used in the palace in Shushan. And Mordechai had some if not Melech Melevush Matchut with Techelet Zahab. We see that Techelet Zahab, all the different Kelim that were used there are used also in Shushan. What does this come to show? This comes to show the Kohanim are our kings. One I mean, of the most classic examples is Tzitzah Zahab. Tzitzah Zahab, what the Kohen Kador wears on his Metzach, Kodesh. Hashem obviously resembles a crown. Any Melech wears a crown, the Kohanim wear the tzitz. What's the idea of this? The idea is to show the Kohanim as part of the leaders of Am Yisrael. We see this a lot also in Sefer Dvarim. Sefer Dvarim, especially in Parashat Shoftim, the Torah tells us of the four parts of the leadership of Am Yisrael. We have Bet Hadin, Hamakom Hashem Ba Bet Hadin, which will be Ba Makom Hashem Yivchar Hashem, what is later called the Sanhedrin. We have the Melech, we have the Navi, and we have the Kohen. The Kohen is also part of the leadership of Am Yisrael, and therefore they dress up as kings. Obviously the king is going to dress up as a king, but the Kohanim as well. And therefore maybe that can also explain to us why Moshe Rabbeinu is the Chorah pushed aside in his parasha. His name, as the Midrash says, is not mentioned inside parasha Tetzaveh. But more than it says, Ve'ata, Ve'ata, Ve'ata. It seems to be that we seem to be ignoring Moshe Rabbeinu. Not just not mentioning his name, as we find in certain parashot and Sefer Dvarim, it's more Ve'ata, Ve'ata, Ve'ata. And the reason is to emphasize that Moshe Rabbeinu maybe have been, may have been the king, as the Chazar Rodoresh in Parashat Vezot Abracha, Ve'ayi Bishurun Melech, that the Melech is Moshe Rabbeinu, Aharon and Banav are the kings in the Mikdash, and therefore they need to dress as such. That's one direction. The second direction I want to offer has to do with what the Chinuch said. The Chinuch said that has a psychological effect. When you see someone dressed in a in, in, in special way, you feel like this is a special place. And the Rambam and the Moran of Ochim writes a lot about the fact that when someone comes to the Mikdash, it's meant to be something significant. It's meant to be something amazing. You see this huge building, and you see, and you hear music, and you can see, um, you, you smell the Besamim. And you can see the guards there, and the guards are guarding the Beit HaMikdash. Even though they're not in the guard from, it's Lechavod Ultifaret. The clothes here give a psychological effect, first of all, on the person wearing them. The Kohen realizes who he's standing, Dalif Nehemiah Tomed. And the people coming to the Beit HaMikdash and to the Mishkan also have the same effect, and they realize where they are coming to. One more direction I want to offer that I heard from Rabbi Feldman, has to do with the comparison between the Mishkan that we find and between Briyat Olam. Now, Necham Aleba, we draw a lot about this, that it says here, Vayasu, Vayasu, Vayasita, 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 send us back to uh, Briyat Olam, where Hashem is the one creating. Which we see, Hashem created the world, and after Hashem creates the world, uh, then Am Yisrael are told to create a house to allow Hashem to dwell in the world. Which means Hashem built the world for Am Yisrael, V'keneged Zeh, Am Yisrael built a Mishkan, Vayasu li Mikdash, V'shachant to enable the Shechina to come into the world that Hashem Himself created. It's sort of like a, a returning the favor. If Hashem created the world, we create something towards Hashem. Not that Hashem needs it, as we spoke about last week, but Hashem wants us to create for Him as well. Now, if we take that comparison, we know the clothes have a significant place in Ma'aseh Bereshit. After Chet Etz Hadat, then we find that the first first thing that the that, uh, that Adam notices is that he notices that he's naked, and it says, um, The first thing that man creates is clothes. That's Hashem created the world, but the first thing that man creates is, clo- is clothes. Now the Midrash adds that man also created fire, but after Hashem created the world, man creates clothes, and we see that Hashem also took part of this in Pasuk Afale, Ve'as Hashem Elohim, La'adam Belishto, Kotnot Or Vayal Bishem. We see here that Hashem also took part in the manufacturing of the clothes. The clothes are the first thing that man created. But these clothes were clothes that took man away from Hashem. The man used 
to live in Gan Eden. Ruach Elohim Echefet. You could see it. Kolcha Shamati Bagan. They seem to be walking with each other, and the clothes symbolize the distance between um, between Adam and Hashem, between man and God. The clothes are the distance. Man creates the clothes. Hashem creates the clothes. They work together, but they work together to create distance. Whereas in the Mishkan, the Mishkan seems to be the tikkun of that. Big day Hakeuna will be the things that will enable Ashrat Shechina Ba'olam and bring man closer to Hashem again. Davka, the thing that was used to, get, to make the distance between man and God will be the same thing that will bring man and God together once again. We find that same phenomenon after Adam is taken out of Gan Eden, who keeps the person out in Pasuk of Dalet? So we see the Keruvim are the one that keep man out and keep man distant from God. These same Keruvim will be the ones which will be on Aron Habrit. These will be the ones who will be in the same Keruvim at the same place that Hashem talks. Which we see that the, the Mishkan is not only like the next step where man takes creation, and he builds a room for Hashem. After Hashem built room for him, he builds room for Hashem more than that. The Mishkan will also bring us back to Maaseiz of Bereshit where man and God were closer. The point of the Mishkan is to make this intimacy between Hashem and between man. We said last week, inside of Am Yisrael. That's the point. The point is to cause this intimacy. And the same things that brought distance between man and between God, the clothes and the kuvim will be the same thing that will once again bring Bring man and God closer together. The clothes of the Kohanim will be the ones that bring Hashem and man together. And once again, the Kuvim will do that as well. The Mishkan will renew the Brit, will renew the day of Maaseh Bereshit. The Mishkan, the Ramban notes, the Mishkan is a continuation of Maaseh Sinai, of Har Sinai. But not only a continuation of Ma'amad Har Sinai is the Mishkan, the, Ma'amad, the Mishkan is also takes us back to Maaseh Bereshit, also takes us back to Gan Eden, Lechadesh Yameinu Kekedem. Shabbat Shalom everyone.